morning, Monticello Christian Church family. Welcome to our online worship service this week. Let's begin our time together with a word of prayer. Gracious God of mercy, we thank you for your presence with us. We thank you for the freedom offered to us so freely as we gather in this community to share our faith. We open our hearts to the future of this church. We ask that you would make us a blessing. Prepare us to serve and to celebrate the ministries you place before us. Giver of everlasting life, fill us again with your spirit. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. lift up our hearts in prayer for ourselves and for those that we know. Let us pray. Patient God, each and every day you offer to us new hope, freedom, and many blessings. From the rising of the sun to its descent, the light of your love pours on your creation. We love these things, but we want to hold on to each of your blessings just for ourselves. Teach us to share openly and willingly with each other. Forgive our selfishness and Turn it to selflessness in service of you, O Lord. We take things so easily, and we talk so easily about being a friendly church. We like to think of ourselves as a place where everyone is welcomed, but our welcome should not be confined to these walls. We're called to adopt attitudes of hospitality to others who may not return the favor. We are called to be willing to take the risk of hospitality in our workplaces, our homes, our communities, and everywhere we go. For you reached out to people in all kinds of conditions. Lord, as your patience and love extends forth to us, we lift to you today those on our church prayer list, those on our hearts, as well as ourselves, in the silence of our hearts now. Lord Jesus, as you've welcomed us, regardless of our faults and failings, let us also be a welcoming presence to all in your name. For it's in Christ's name we pray, for it was he who taught us to pray this prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hear the good news. God has again blessed our lives with hope and joy. Be at peace, my friends, for God is with us. May the peace of God be always with you. And may you greet one another with signs of peace this day.
In communion, we're invited to remember the death and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ and how they provide us with eternal life. On the night before his betrayal, Jesus gathered with his disciples and he took the loaf of bread and after giving thanks to God for it, he broke it and gave it to them and said, take this all of you. This is my body which is broken for you and as often as you shall eat of it, do so in remembrance of me. He then took the cup gave thanks to God for it and gave it to his disciples and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood which is shed for you. And as often as you shall drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. As the apostle wrote in 1 John chapter 2, the world and its desires pass away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever. And so we have the same eternal hope that our work and service and suffering for him are not in vain because we trust in him today and for tomorrow. Hospitality, a warm welcome, is generosity. When we welcome each other, each child of God, into the life of this church, we extend God's own generous hospitality. And our gifts help this graceful ministry to flourish and to grow and to give glory unto the Lord. Let us gather our gifts together and offer them to God in gratitude and in praise. Amen. passage this morning comes from the book of Romans chapter 8 verses 16 through 25. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now if we are children then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that, we, that will be revealed in us. The creation waits in eager expectation for the sons of God to be revealed. Or the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought to the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. But hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what has, he already has? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. This is the word of God for you, the people of God. Well, we are at our uh, place in our series about the fruit of the Spirit where we look at patience. And I can't imagine how many times we've gone before the Lord asking for just that. God, give me patience. Now, I would feel I could speak with authority on all of these situations almost uh, or at least most of them, what we are really saying is not that we want patience, but that what we're saying is, give me what I want, Lord, and I want it now. We say that patience is a virtue because we are impatient people. We have to be reminded of how virtuous patience really is because it isn't something that we have as our default and I can say this because I'm guilty of it myself. I look at my life and I see the places where I need patience. 
I love my Keurig, my single cup coffee maker, because I love coffee and I have no patience to wait on a full pot of coffee. Now, my wife, in her infinite uh, wisdom, in her great compassion, she enjoys utilizing a, a pot of coffee maker because then you can at least share the coffee. And uh, I don't have the patience for that. I wander back and forth. Oh, when's the coffee going to be done? I'm a, of the generation that was before the internet and then had to live through dial-up. You would think I, I would have some patience when it came to the internet, but if it takes a little too long for the page to load, I'm completely out of patience for it. Even right down to something as simple as grits. I got used to instant grits when we still had it here in Monticello. Uh, the, butter, the butter grits is what they have at the Walmart, but what we love is the cheddar grits. So I don't have the patience even to, to go and find the cheddar grits. But the, the best grits are the grits that take longer to make. And I don't have the time for that. I don't have the patience for that. We have self-checkouts. And, and this has only been allowed to go as far as it is because we just are standing in line and we throw up our hands and say, oh, I'll, I'll check, check it out myself. Rather than waiting like we have for generations so that things can go the way and the speed that they need to go. We see that uh, as we press deeper into it that we, we don't have the patience even for each other. We don't have patience for our kids that we are completely running out of the ability to wait. It's important that we see that patience is something that is not given. It's learned. When we pray that God would give us patience... He gives us an opportunity to be patient. As a parent of four daughters, I've had the opportunity to exercise the muscle of patience. We have these incredible themes that are for us when we look at patience. That, that there is strength and perseverance. There is calm versus being anxious. And, and that's where our minds go when we consider the fruit of the Spirit, patience. But there's something that we need to look at first before looking at ourselves and how patience relates to us is that, that, that God's patience with us should be primary. That we should first look at God's patient uh, relationship with us. Consider how God has been patient through our sinning. That God is patient as he suffers with us. That, that when we have complete disregard for our brothers and sisters in Christ... That, that God is patient through our apathy. That, that when we have uh, places to, to serve in ministry and we don't utilize that time well, we don't utilize the opportunities to share the gospel. That when we misuse our power, God is patient. Even in the midst of us rejecting God, God has patience. Let's look at the book of Micah, chapter 7, verse 18. Who is a God like you? who pardons sin and forgives the transgression of the remnant of his inheritance. You do not stay angry forever, but delight to show mercy. You will again have compassion on us. You will tread our sins underfoot and hurl our iniquities into the depths of the sea. What a tremendous picture of, of the patience of God in relation to how, though we are wretched and great is our, bear, uh, our uh, burden of sin, God is patient and will offer us mercy. Praise be to God. Psalm 40 also gives us insight. I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and the mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. Though we were in a place of, of dire situation, that we see that God was faithful. He put a new song in my mouth, the hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in him. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, who does not look to be to the proud, to those who turn aside to false gods. Many, Lord my God, are the wonders you have done, the things you've planned for us. None can compare with you. Were I to speak and to tell of your deeds, there would be too many to declare. The power of God that, that is born witness to us in our lives that we 
need to take the time to look at, to, to, to trust in God as God remains patient with us, that, that God has stood by to offer mercy to us as we've gone our own way. And when we finally realize the error of our ways, the truth of, of, of our own burden of sin, there stands God to draw us forth from the slimy pit, out of the mud of the mire, and to set us back on firm ground. We see that God has been, God is the very picture of patience, as we see with the rest of the fruit that love and joy and peace, these are, are summed up in the character of God. There's not things that we ourselves can draw forth in our own experience as paragons of, of joy. And it's in God alone that we see this example. But the fruit of, of our patience has to be born forth out of, uh, out of our, uh, a close understanding of how God has exhibited that to us. And in spite of all the things around us, when we have the opportunity to be angry or in the face of anger, to be patient. To, to be ones who don't keep score. That, that this is exhibiting a complete lack of patience when we try to hold fast to grudges. That when we are patient, we have to exhibit trust. We have to exhibit endurance and perseverance. These are all things outside of just the feeling of being patient, but how we go about living it in the world. James has, has a, a, a fantastic way of opening up this idea of patience. Because we have to look first at, at patience isn't something we utilize when we are not waiting for anything or, or, or not having... Uh, a reason to be upset or to trust or to be angry or to endure anything. We have to act upon and in patience through trials, and through difficulties and hardships. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking in anything. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. We, we have to trust in God. We have to be resolute in our faith and, and be patient. We may want something now as well as it is, and we must rate... A, Remain to wait on the Lord, to trust in God. And in James 1, we hear that it is pure joy to face trials because within us it builds perseverance. And we move to James 5, verse 7. Be patient then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop, patiently waiting for the autumn and spring rains. You too be patient and stand firm because the Lord's coming is near. Don't grumble against one another, brothers and sisters, or you'll be judged. The judge is standing at the door. Brothers and sisters, as an example of patience in the face of suffering, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. As you know, we count as blessed those who have persevered. You have heard of Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. The Lord is patient and compassionate and full of mercy and the image of love and joy and peace. And so we, again, as we follow this pattern, have to look to Jesus. That we might have in our lives borne forth the fruit of patience. To trust in God and to be those who are worthy of trust in our own life. So where, wherever we find ourselves, we find ourselves at Walmart, which many have said tested, tests their patience, that when we are in the midst of trouble and difficulty, when we are in the midst of hardship, we have to exhibit patience. And so we have to, uh, have to ask the questions of ourselves as we have done each week. Who models this for you? We look unto the Lord and we see patience, who else can we look to in our life who has dialed in and understands the importance of bearing fruit of patience in their life? Who models this for you? Also, who do we model to at Walmart in the midst of hardship? 
who is looking at us to be an example of patience? And, and are we living into that, into the Christ-like uh, bearing forth a fruit of patience? Perhaps we need to dive deeper. If this isn't something that we have grasped hold of well, who do you makes you just lose your patience? And how can you amend that relationship? Who do we model our lack of patience to? What situations cause us to, to lose our ability to persevere? And how, might, how we cast that upon uh, before the Lord's throne to help us to be more patient. Fruit is something we do through action. And, and we grow in our ability to be patient, to be uh, uh, enduring through trial. And God has a purpose for our waiting. God has a purpose for the trials. God has a purpose for us to grow in our patience. And we do so by first looking to Jesus and seeking to have the opportunity to grow in patience. It's trusting God to be the one who is guiding and molding and, and preparing us through these difficult times. And in these ways of strengthening the muscle of patience, we see in the Bible Many times when there is a time of, of waiting, with the 40 days in the ark, the 40 years in the wilderness, that there is there's an, this anticipation. And there is always come that 41st day, uh, so to speak, there is this time of great rejoicing and celebration because God's been faithful. Those who have passed through trial have come out on the other side with an understanding within themselves and, and, and have become strengthened. We see even in the wilderness, as Christ spent 40 days in fasting, he passed through temptation. May we be not found wanting. May, may our uh, quality come through as we trust in God to mold us into patient people. As well as being those who bear forth all of the good fruit of love and joy and peace. And as we continue on through the fruit of the Spirit. May we as Christ's own bear good fruit. And may we find ourselves in the, in the great and difficult times being patient. And may we find ourselves just merely standing in line. And enjoying the opportunity to thank God for the many blessings that we have. And the opportunities that we have. And, and for the people in our life that enrich it so. That we might give praise unto the Lord for the ways in which he has given us not only those blessings, but the opportunity to recognize them amidst the waiting. May the glory be to God today as we seek to be bearers of good fruit and to be patient. Amen. patiently go forth into the world proclaiming God's love to all. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>